we have a treat for you folks. We visit the little town that gave agave liquor its famous name. Yep, get ready for the town of Tequila, located in the state of Jalisco in southern Mexico. Coming to you right now. This, friends, where we're at right now, this is Jalisco. We're in the town of Tequila, and this is the agave plant. This is the plant they shave. This is the plant they dig out. They cut to pieces, they boil, and this is where they get the tequila from, the agave plant. So uh, we're here in the town of Tequila, believe it or not. We're here, and we're gonna get to see one of the main distillers of tequila on the planet, the Jose Cuervo uh, facility. So stay with us, folks. It's Crossing South. So Jalisco is rich in agave plants. It's a state about a three hour flight away from San Diego and it's located in the tropical part of Mexico. Now the town of Tequila is right in the thick of it. Well, as the crow flies, it's probably half hour, but as the taxi drives, it's an hour from Guadalajara, the town of Tequila. But this is like the Tequila Disneyland. I mean, you see it and there's banners all over the town. There's tours, so that's the reason to come to Tequila. Oh yeah, baby. Cultural stereotypical expectations successfully met. I'm telling you, this town is very, very charming. Among the reasons is that you find tourists looking to get a buzz. You found the local townsfolk also just, just living their lives, sitting at the local square, almost taking a siesta while still awake, not really caring what outsiders do. And speaking of outsiders, that will include foreigners in very informal attire, like backpackers in shorts, flip-flops, and your wealthy Mexicans who are very easy to distinguish from the locals. Those are the ones wearing the designer sunglasses. Edgar Allan Poe, caught the raven, nevermore. Okay, so we are at the place for tequila in the town of tequila, sorry for being redundant, but that this is the place, the Jose Cuervo uh, facility. And we have our trusty guide that'll lead us through uh, this adventure, which is Alfred, my friend, how are you? Uh, nice to meet you, we're all good, we're all good, <laughs> all set, oh yeah. So Alfred, first of all, tell us about this place. How long has it been here? Well, the, you're referring to the town. It's been here since uh, 1530. 1530. Wow, that's pretty long. What about the tequila facility? The actual uh, factory since 1758. 1758. It's okay. Been a while. So that's before before the U.S. was born. The Cuervo factory was already pumping out tequila. The source for tequila, the, the beverage, is the plants, the agave. The that's blue the agave, source for that's tequila. The source, and it takes 10 years to mature. Really? Yes, that's that's difficult. So Actually, you, making tequila is in four in four steps for five days away. No, you, you, okay. So to mature the plant, 10 years. it's 10 years. Yes. Not to make the actual tequila. No, they get to weigh between 80 to 120 pounds, uh -huh. and for 15 pounds, you get at least one bottle of tequila. Okay, so we're gonna go see the actual pineapples, the way you call them, the the fruits. Exactly. The agave fruits. What do we have to do first? Well, first of all, uh, sport the hair name. For hygiene standards, we're big on hygiene, so not big on style, but big on hygiene. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, so here we see how uh, the workers, known as oven loaders, yeah. they actually said um, they split in half the pineapple was too big. It's way too big in four sections. Okay. And, and the idea of, uh, with this is to actually make them fit better in the oven. In the oven. One byproduct of the cooked agave would be agave syrup. Which, syrup? Yes. Which, is that for my pancakes or what? Well, that could be one thing, pancakes. <laughs> 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 there you go. Okay, and I see the guy's covered like pretty well. He's got gloves. We're just padding for uh, lower section of your feet. As you can see here, they, they receive around 25 tons per load, per rig, 25 tons. Really? Yes. Okay, so where are we at here? So what we see here are the ovens. And again, these ovens have been here since the 18th century. Every oh, oven, man. As you can tell, it's- Are uh, those already cooked? They're already cooked. But so how do you heat them up? Do you have wood underneath or what? No, they're actually, they're injecting steam for over 30 hours. Really? The same process for loading. They're all loading by hand. It takes the workers two hours and a half to do the job. To clear it out. So it smells similar to Piloncillo or yams or sweet potato. Yams. It smells similar to that. It yeah. does, it does. You cook them, you steam them. What happens after this? Well, next, uh, they, they unload them, they fall to this belt, a conveyor belt, and then they press all the juice out. That's it. From here, it's pressing. And is that tequila? No. Then it's fermenting and distilling. Explain to me the fermenting process. What, what is that? Uh, what's the ferment? It's uh, converting sugar into alcohol. This process takes between eight to 12 uh, days. Do you just leave it sitting there and it ferments itself? Or? No, they're adding lots of water and yeast. Okay. In a controlled environment, it takes two days. It actually accelerates. Okay. Once fermented, it's then distilled, okay. and then you have the gila. Is distilled synonymous to filtering? Yes. Okay, so, so what is this guy? That's pretty much uh, shavings of the actual cooked agave. No, no sugar added, nothing. This is nothing. just cooked. Just cooked. Straight out. Straight out. This is how it tastes. Natural. So, if you didn't ferment it and, and do everything you do after you cook it, could you make like a sweet nectar kind of thing with this thing? I mean, well, it seems like a, like a sweet, sweet juice. Could you make something that's non-alcoholic with it? Yes. Could it be done? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Like, what, what, what would it be if, if it... Well, the byproduct is agave syrup. Syrup. Yes. I'm telling you, the tour groups for this place are jamming. You know, they take a train from Guadalajara, and they're tequila tasting for the duration of the ride, so I doubt many of them will actually remember anything from this tour. So the ovens are the same ones we saw from the outside? Same deal. So, I mean, what do they do? Do they take them out through that side or do they drop them off here? We'll drop them off, uh, they open up the, the door and they, they set the, the, uh, a ramp okay. from the oven towards the belt. To pour them on the conveyor belt. Uh -huh. And then just drag them out, take us two hours and a half. So, so the, the other entrance we saw is where they put them in. Yes. They don't take him out through there. No. They take him out through here. Got it. Gotcha. Huh? One shot a day keeps the doctor. Oh, it's no, game. come it's on. Game. <laughs> but it is proven. That's why, George, man. George, but it is proven that with the one shot of uh, vodka, rum, or tequila uh, actually improves your blood flow. Really? Proven clinically. One shot, just one. Because, you know, it does kill off uh, cholesterol in the bloodstream. So one shot a day is good Are for the heart. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, man. Okay, so it's pretty cool if it's true. However, uh, let's just take uh, Alfred's health tips with a grain of salt since he's not a licensed healthcare professional. In these vats, you have uh, uh, one quarter should be the juice of the, uh, uh, the agave, the cooked agave, one quarter the juice of the agave, lots of water and yeast. So in this building, it's pressed and the juice flows here? Yes. And you just leave it here for a few days. Exactly. The next phase is to be distilled. Exactly, exactly. And uh, well, again, it's considered a controlled environment, so it accelerates. And uh, again, in two days, not in 12, in two days, it's done, fermented. What happens here? Here, as you mentioned before, a synonym of uh, uh, distillation is purification or filtering. Okay. And that goes on here? Yes. So, in this case, we have copper pot still. 
you evaporate and then condense. On the back of the wall, you'll find condensers packed with cold water. So in between goes to the, the steam, it condenses, and you have your liquid, you have your tequila, right? Wait that's, a second, so the tequila, the tequila is drawn from the vapor? Yes. So what happens with the, the remainder, whatever remains down here? Okay, so by time you have three different liquids, known as the heads, the body, and the tails. So it's the job of the engineer to only separate the body, which will have herb-like aromas, flower-like aromas, or fruits. So that's the leftover, that's a fiber from the, uh, the cooked agave, and it's just recycled. Like these, these uh, you know, table mats are the, the really? Precisely. Okay. Table mats. So you can drink your tequila on tequila, right? <laughs> it can come in the form of paper of agave. Paper? Paper of agave. Wow, old papyruses. Now I need an ink corn and... I mean, leave nothing to waste, right? Mm -hmm. Next, this is uh, oak. Oak, They've yeah. been using oak for over centuries for cognac and port wine, red wine, right? Well, the idea is not to store it, but to enhance the flavor to you and you know, transform the, the profile. So the oak will do that. Exactly. It'll enhance the flavor. Exactly. So in glass, it won't age. At all. Oh, really? At all. Once in a bottle, it'll, still, it'll stay there indefinitely. The way it is. Yeah, it's immortal. Wow. It's immortal. So if you want it to keep aging, take it out of the glass and put it in something that's wood. Yes, and only oak. But only oak. when it's there for over eight years, it starts to acquire this vinegar-like taste, so okay. pull it out. So eight years is the max. Like but I mean, you do have like wines that are, you know, more than eight years old, right? I mean, yes. decades, maybe 100. Well, for tequila, it's five to seven years the oldest. For tequila. Which is known as the family reserve. If you use cedar, mahogany, or pine, you cause a negative change in your tequila. You're kidding. So by only using oak, you have this positive change to your beverage. That is the only wood that has that positive effect. Exactly. On wow. Exactly. Before the 60s, there was only white tequila in existence. It wouldn't age. It wouldn't age. It was straight to bottle. Uh-huh. Hence fire water. 1960s, it began to be aged. Wow. For us, the, pu the, the public. Okay. So that would be the white tequila. No straight out. No aging. No aging. White tequila stays in the oak barrels between two months to 11 months. That's, and a, that's this one. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And acquires a golden taste two months to 11, less than a year. Okay, so how, how, how much aging does this one have? I'd say four months. Four months. So it, got, it gets a little color. Now this is probably a year. Nine months. Nine months, okay, nine, wow. So what's this then? This is almost... One year to three, it's called aged tequila. Aged tequila. And then the family reserve seven years. Seven years, exactly. Wow. So three years and beyond is known as extra age. Uh, so this is 18 months. 18 months old. So it's got yeah. a little color. No explosion. <laughs> the taste is great. I love the taste. The taste, is, I liked it better than the white one. So. The misting, uh, it's every three, five minutes to acquire around 70 to 75% of moisture or humidity. And this way, slowly per year, we only lose 5%, what the French call the angel share. So what does that mean? That 5% is being consumed by the barrel. Every year it's going down slowly, 5%, 5%. Really? Yes, and we're not misting. In a few months, brrr, there's no kid left. It's consumed that fast. And it's in the wood? Yeah, it's, it's like a, a sponge that's absorbing and You're evaporating. You're kidding. So that evaporation goes where? To the skies, where the angels dwell, you know? So, oh, so you're giving it away. To, to the <laughs> angels, right? So, I know. They burn or, they, or they, 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 they char on the inside before being used. They on purpose? On purpose to acquire different aromas. Really? To, to allow to release different aromas. Wow. I wonder how they found that out to begin with, you know? The first time they ever did it, you wonder, oh, wow, burned wood gives it a flavor, you know? Okay, so that's five years of angel share. I wonder what an hour of Jorge share would be. In, according to the legend, in the past, uh, a woman, a native woman, she witnessed a lightning striking on a guy plant and smelled sweet. So this woman tells her people, the uh, natives, and they realize so that juice would give them different emotions. <laughs> you mean they got drunk? Exactly. <laughs> so they have no clue what's going on, and in their primitive minds, they're thinking, ah, oh, we're being possessed by the gods. Spirit drink. Spirit drink. And that was it. That's funny. Next, 
Down come the Spanish afterwards. Centuries go by. Down come the Spanish. Is that Jose Cuervo right there? Yes. <laughs> you have the cooking process. You have your workers. Pit furnace. Same and they look very dog. similar. Like that guy. I think we saw that guy outside. So. <laughs> <laughs> Huge round stone to press the juice out. Yeah. What's he pouring in there? Pouring the fermented juice. To distill it. Correct. Mass production. Party hardy. Feeling happy. Different emotions. Tequila's born. Now we also got access to the catacombs, as I call them. It's not really that. It's really the family underground tequila cellar which had this eerie wind blowing in from who knows where. Sorry folks, that's my Indiana Jones moment. Okay, so we're here in your dungeon. Uh, <laughs> this is the cellar, obviously. Temperature is perfect down here. It's nice and cool, humid, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to give anything away to them angels, right? <laughs> exactly. so, so tell me about this. Well, this place has been here since 1890 and 1900, wow. and it, it is a cellar for the production of the best tequila, which is the Family's Reserve brand. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is it. This is the best stuff. High end. And that huge round stone uh, it. weighs two towels. You press it, moved around by two animals, you know, oxes or mules, just press the juice out. Okay, Alfred, you want to help me push this thing? Uh. <laughs> so, where are we? Two, two studs. Are we two animals? Two, two, <laughs> two studs, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> good recovery there, Alfred. Where, where, where? A couple of studs. No, good. Uh, so, oh, are man. we doing this together or what? Or what? Yeah, let's try to uh, do it. Right, right. But, you know, just okay. pose with it, right? <laughs> not even, not even close. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna hurry in before I move this thing an inch. So, how, how much does this stone weigh? Two tons. Two tons. Pretty big and it's super heavy. I can't believe two oxen would move this though. Mm -hmm. It's super heavy. Or two mules. Wow. Right? Careful with your. I have, a new, I have a new respect for oxen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so this is the old equivalent of what we saw inside the distillery. It's still copper. But this is what they used to use back in the day. Less sophisticated, but they did the same job. Okay, so in the old days, that pit you see right there, they put a fire underneath, put all the pineapples in, and then cover it with mud, leaves, and stuff, and leave it for two days. And that's how they would bake it. That's the old way of baking it. Then pressed here by that gigantic rock we tried to move a few seconds ago, so. What's your thoughts on this machine to your left right there? What's your thoughts? What is that? What is that? And it's from the Big Apple. It was imported from New York. So what is it? Well, what was your thought? What's your I don't opinion? know, like a print? Uh, Close. You know, actually, you're, um, in that sense, you're warm. <laughs> Cement block, <laughs> brick maker. Oh, getting colder, getting colder. <laughs> uh, the print label for the tequila? Got it. Oh, really? You aced it. You aced it. I got it's it? a label machine, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That's funny. If I was a 19th century aristocrat, this is not too uncomfortable, man. This is a pretty sweet ride. Of course, the streets were probably pebble stone and stuff. Made it a little bit rocky, right? And I would have my chauffeur, right, handling the reins while I try to sip some tea and you know, spread some Grey Poupon on my crumpets. You know? I don't know if Grey Poupon existed back then, but... <laughs> just imagine a hipster mustache like this big. You know, just a big old mustache this big. A little bit of curl on the end. So to finish out the tour in this fascinating and storied place, we did our educational tequila tasting. Okay, so what are we doing, my friend? Tell me what are we doing. Sure, uh, this is a tequila tasting. Okay. With um, an official, three official tequila glasses. Okay. Yes. I didn't know tequila glasses existed. Okay. So the portion is only two, two ounces. That's how much you're supposed to serve yes. every time? Yeah. Why? Because once you serve tequila, it is quite volatile, and after 10 minutes, it evaporates. So let's start with the white tequila. Okay. Expose so it, lift it, your glass, lift the hold it little coaster thing. Yeah. It'll be tempting to do this. Tempting to do this, but no, you're gonna warm it up. So hence a stem, you do it as low as possible. As low as possible. As to wait warming it up. You warm it up like this? You do not warm it up. You do not warm it up, okay. And then just to make sure it's authentic, you serve tequila, slowly swirl, 
you'll find mm -hmm. both uh, tiers and legs. The short ones are known as tiers, and the long ones are legs. And then a combination is called the body. Oh, wow, I see it. I see the tiers and I see the legs. That is fantastic. In this position, out comes the alcohol, kills aroma. So you serve tequila, you tilt over to you, and you sniff just like this. From the lowest section and up. Smell's not my strongest sense, but I was sensing, oh boy. I was sensing, I was smelling very rich aromas. Now, let me know if there's a change. It's stronger. Stronger. It's stronger. Okay. So, I'm going to ask you, George, to uh, activate some nerve endings by pressing where the bone meets the cartilage, right there. Press for five seconds. We're activating nerve endings and it stimulates the way you perceive your aromas. So, by pressing four or five seconds, go again for your glass in position. It's, it's more pleasant. It was super pleasant. It wasn't, it wasn't alcohol -y at all. You know, normally, when you do it the way you were doing it, the way you told me not to do it, it's like, woo, like a mule kick, right? Exactly. Okay. So it worked? It worked, my it friend. Worked? It worked? Awesome. That's definitely an eraser. <laughs> <sighs> Super strong. I need this in the mornings. Put that aside. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, whoa, 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 <laughs> to wake up, okay? Next last, it's the golden tequila. It's a different profile, right? They're in profile. So it's a point of reference, it's not the lime peel. We use it as a point of reference, it's cinnamon. Okay, in position with your golden tequila, in position. Yes, remove. It's stronger than the white one. Cook the agave fibers. Yes. The aged tequila, remove the lip. Position. It smells fruity. Very nice. So now we know uh, when we, they ask this popular question, Alfred, what's the best tequila being brewed in the country? And the best tequila, the official answer is the one you enjoy the best. Very nice. It goes down to personal. You know, likings. Correct. And, That's a good uh, answer. So, so are we ready to? So please, George. Are we ready to try it? The one you enjoyed the best. Wow. This is really good stuff. So there you have it, folks. Thank you to my friend Alfred here, who has been a wonderful guide, a wonderful tequila Sherpa in this adventure of exploring tequila here in the town of tequila. So thank you very much, my friend. It's fun to have come here to the source of this nectar uh, <laughs> of different emotions, like the uh, indigenous people would call it, to the town of tequila, the town that coined the name that eventually made its way to a drink that you now know. So we hope you enjoyed the show, folks. It's been Crossing South, and I hope you've liked it. Take care. Well, after getting to know all there is to know about the famous Mexican drink and visiting its birthplace, we leave with happy hearts, wondering what will happen the next time we cross south. You can find maps and information about the places you just saw, or you may order a copy of this program on DVD at CrossingSouth.com. We also do Facebook.